one question. Are we not the bearers of witness that everything that occurs is interconnected? Does it not stand as an unspoken law that not only does everything happen for a reason, but each of those happenings has an outcome, a consequence? Let's say, for instance, I take this pencil, toss it into the air, and down it goes. Now, we all knew that that was going to happen. I mean, we're well aware of the mechanisms regarding gravity acting upon an object to bring it as close to the core as the physical circumstances would allow. That was a pencil, and this floor would be the closest thing to the core that the physical circumstances would allow gravity to pull that pencil to. Question, was it the pencil's idea to fall? Well, I can easily say no, not at all. You see, there were many other forces involved. Do you recall that one movie scene where two children are chasing each other playfully in their home? One says, let's play tag. And the other, this little boy's in his head, he said, ah, mama said we probably shouldn't be running in the house. And I was that one. My mother's right there, everybody, if you can see her. I was that one. I have an older sister, and she was the one that always had, like, the bright ideas. Hey, let's go play tag, you know what I mean, around all these expensive, you know, valuables. I was that one trying to say, I don't know, but he said, all right, let's play. And the game begins with the famous utterance, tag, you're it. And the chase is on. Out of the bedroom, through the halls, down the stairs, <laughs> back up the stairs, and if anything like myself, down the rails, you know, into the kitchen, zoom, to the living room, and then boom. And then that voice comes down, like, I told you. <laughs> and I'm like, man, mother's $2,000 base falls, shatters. <laughs> Game over. It was my own will that led me to pull out this pencil and use it to demonstrate, right? Of course, as soon as I let go of the pistol, under other unseen forces took over, such as gravity. Two children play a game of tag. Mom's asleep, the same for dad. Do not run in this house. A game of good fun just changed to bad. Consequences. Consequences. Have we ever just taken a second to analyze the word? Right? And I'm a rapper, so, or a lyricist, so, one thing we do is we look at words and we try to figure out how many ways we can flip it and, and you know, make it do something, you know what I mean? So if I think of the word consequences, I see con, and keep in mind, this isn't necessarily etymology, it's just one of the ways uh, lyricists, you know, use words. I see con, sequence, right? We can look at it as a sequence of cons. Now, we all remember back in school, right, when we were talking about pros and cons, right? Pros, uh, for example, what would be uh, the pros of going shopping alone, right? Now, if you would ask my mom, she would most likely say, oh, it's a vacation, of course. I get five seconds of solid thought to myself. I'm going to worry about no children coming in and not asking, can I get this, this, and this, and this, and this? And I can go in and out of my leisure, right? Then there were also times where she would call and ask, what kind of cake was I supposed to be getting? And then when she would come home and say, she had gotten way more than she had intended. And if only we had been there. See, those are comments. And like I said, if I look at the word consequence, I see con, sequence. Stay with me. There's a sequence of cons, a sequence of bad things that can happen from a choice that is made, right? Because after that base falls, it not only shatters, but makes a sound. Mom and dad shake awake and frown. Did you hear that? They stagger into the living room and, uh oh. And then she'll see me and my sister with our bright idea, right? She was looking at me and she's like, what? And I'm like, hey, this, this is what just happened, you know, man. And we're standing there, we're looking over the glass, we're like, man, right? Because that game of good fun just changed the bad. There's no need to hone in on any traditional lines here, but the two children are necessarily awarded with cake and ice cream, let's just say that, right? <laughs> but, you know, no matter what creative, creative, said my mother, no matter what creative form of disciplinary action <laughs> is taken, whether it be being put in time out, having your most valued possessions confiscated, 
being grounded for a month, that action is taken to not only represent, but to also encourage the awareness of consequences. I, for example, was always a person who was interested in affecting positive change. I, for the most part, had an optimistic point of view as far as life as we know it is concerned, meaning I was internally convinced that nothing that was broken was unable to be fixed. And although my circumstances moved, not forced, but moved me to grow up quickly, I still, as tightly as I could, held on to that point of view. See, even that was a choice. Recently, I sat down and conducted an interview with the word choice. I had heard many of my mentors mention him in the past, and many people from different walks of life have governed themselves based upon his principles. I wanted to see what was so important about this guy, Choice. During the interview, Choice opened up to me about who he actually was. He explained to me that his name was actually an acronym, and that it stood for Correcting Habits of Inviting Consequences Early. I said, wow, man, could you please explain me why those words? I said, yeah. It went on to explain that many people associate choice as being a simple form of action to be taken when met with two or more choices or two or more options. He explained that choice is not a simple form of action to be taken, but more so that trigger that erupts into a chain reaction of events. He explained that the choice that is made is only the beginning of the chain reaction of those choices. It is important that one learns to correct habits of inviting consequences early. Right? Now, I wasn't a bad child. I had good grades, attendance, but then it went from that to every two weeks getting suspended. One small fight, which led to a cycle. I couldn't end it. I blamed the world. Really, it was I who put me in it. I was tired of being picked on. I spiraled into a rage. See, it didn't matter if he sparked it or not. The winner was praised. I fell in love with that feeling. All the negative attention of a couple of Mike Tyson's and some honorable mentions. But see, even after I thought I escaped, I wasn't close. The situations resurfaced. I gave him another dose. Now I'm putting on my all black, getting ready for court. A straight A student. They knew him for winning every award. What would they say if they saw me in this position? Nothing mommy can do. Mommy just sits and listens. They're trying to give me time. And they're telling the judge I earned it. Luckily, who I really am is something she was concerned with. She chose to adjust and close. As if she already knew that if my decisions would have landed me in the cell, I wouldn't be talking to you. And now I'm just walking through consequences. Choice isn't really an easy concept to ponder when met with circumstances that are already unfortunate which is why it is important that one learns to correct habits of inviting consequences early. As I look out into this world, I can see where the knowledge as well as the application of choice is necessary. It is very important that we learn to develop that relationship with choice as early as we possibly can. Now, I never said that the people who invite those negative happenings don't make choices, or that they aren't aware of choice. They just simply haven't yet fully explored the true power of choice, and have therefore found themselves resorting to making negative ones more often than not. But in their defense, not only is it not hard to develop that habit, but it also isn't hard to be pulled back into the habit after having broken it, which is why the application and the knowledge of choice is essential to one's growth in the matter. I'm from a very rough part of town, like Pearl, big family. As the second oldest of seven siblings, five boys, three girls, I often find myself coaching them on the practice of choice. And there have been many occasions, such as quite recently, where even I was pressured with making a decision that could have landed my family in an unfortunate chain of events. The following story is Perfect example as to why it is important that we learn to correct those habits early. 
Lives could depend on it. My younger brother burst in. He was sweaty and frantic. He said, they just jumped us. How could you not expect me to panic? He said, us. But my other little brother, he wasn't with him. So I took off and even grabbed my kicks. Feet slapping the concrete on the way to the court. My other brothers running with me, we ain't taking no shorts. As soon as I saw the guys, I was ready to hit. See, usually I don't, but they be just little kids. You see, my first mind was to figure out the people involved. Let my little brothers get a one-on-one -on -one with each of them, y'all, but it got way out of control. Let my common sense go a minute, and now I'm getting jumped by some folks I ain't even know was in it. I looked to my left to see my brothers isolated, each of them getting jumped on. As soon as I try to break it up, boom, another issue. In this situation, it helps to know that your brother's with you, but one of my brothers got hurt. He was bleeding out of the nose. Now I'm grabbing my brothers. I'm like, yo, it's time to go. You see, please keep in mind that this situation, this circumstance is not uncommon, especially where I'm coming from. Someone reaches for a gun, they pull out, they draw out of fear. These types of things can go wrong quickly, and this was because of the choice. That I made. My brothers and I got into that trouble, and I remember I'm on the phone, retaliation now. I'm making a phone call. Retaliation. But maybe I'm making the wrong call. Even my family was asking me, what you trying to do? In my mind, I'm thinking, I ain't trying to lose. Because like I said, once that decision, once that choice is made, it's done. And consequences come especially from a major one, had my mama questioning the way she raised her sons. It's a real question. Why lose just to say we won? Because there were many possible outcomes of my retaliating that day. Like I said, someone can reach for a gun. They pull out and they shoot because they're afraid. The bullet enters an all too fatal part of one of my people's bodies. The body falls to the ground, lifeless. Here's the question. Was it the body's idea to fall? One can easily say no, not at all. See, there were many other forces involved. The main force at hand, choice. Meaning, I chose to retaliate. I chose to make a phone call. I chose to load vehicles up with willing people. I chose to gather people to do harm. And I chose to hop out first. And I chose to swing and say, so y'all want to jump? Let's fight. And everything that happened leading up to one of my family members or friends losing their life would have been a result of my choice. But I chose to not invite those consequences. And I can only be grateful. I can only be grateful that I came to realize the true power of choice. As I look out into this world, I can see where the knowledge as well as the application of choice is needed. That leads me to a new acronym and nickname I gave choice. And that is creating habits of inciting, inciting, change effectively. Once more, creating habits of inciting change effectively. You see, once we've learned to alleviate the invitation of consequences, now we have placed ourselves on a higher plane of awareness. What does that mean? That means we have placed ourselves in a form of elevation on a level of responding versus reacting. And this world is in desperate need of people who can reach that level. Now is the time that we activate ourselves. It's not only love ourselves, but also one another. It's time that we choose choice. Let's choose to help that boy out who definitely needs our assistance. Let's choose to lead that young lady in the right direction. Let's choose to open our minds and listen to that homeless person's story about their day. Let's choose to activate that love within ourselves and reach out. Let's choose to listen to our parents and not run in the house. Let's choose to consider gravity 
before dropping that pencil. Let's choose choice. Let's correct habits of inviting consequences early and create habits of inciting change effectively. Thank you.